Last week, Google dropped a pretty big announcement. They just announced their gaming platform. Not, not in the same way that Microsoft has Xbox as its platform or Sony has PlayStation as its platform, but Google announced they have Stadia or they're going to have Stadia. They're in the works right now. Not a lot of information was given, but what they have given has gotten a lot of people speculating about certain things. First off, I have my notes here in my trusty Wumbo University notebook just to make sure that I keep on track about everything that I wanted to talk about for this video because this one is going to be a little bit lengthy. First off, it's not actually a console. That's why I'm saying it's not the same way that Microsoft and Sony have their platforms. Google has its platform, but it's mainly going to be a streaming service, kind of like Netflix, but for video games. And you'll see that allegory everywhere, just, just everywhere. If you look up Google Stadia, odds are you will see at least five different titles of like articles saying that it is going to be the Netflix of gaming. We got to figure out a better a streaming game a game stream service. Nonetheless, it looks really cool. Like I'm actually kind of interested. But before I tell you all that I like, I'm going to go over what they actually announced. First off, it is a cloud streaming service. We've seen a few of these come up before, but none of them have the power or the drive like Google. I mean, come on, it's Google. <laughs> no one can compare to them except for like, you know, Apple maybe. But even then, I don't think Apple cares about video games that much. However, they did announce that in order for them to be able to stream it to any device, the device has to be able to use Chrome. Then again, name a device that doesn't use Chrome or isn't avail Chrome isn't available. If it uses Chrome or it can have Chrome, it can stream there. My iPhone 7, it supposedly can stream there. My laptop, it can stream there. My, my tablet, which is crappy, it can stream there. As long as it has an internet connection and is capable of running Chrome, they say it's capable of running Stadia. And then again, it's Google. They have a huge connection all over the world. 19 regions, 200 plus countries and territories. That's a huge, huge area that they can immediately say, yeah, it's available over there. Go check it out. And then of course, the biggest factor I think that separates Stadia from the other cloud services that popped up, game developers got a huge amount of support as well. Like just to list a few of the things that the, the Stadia development kit has, it has Unity, Unreal, Vulkan, Havoc, CryEngine, and many more. And it has backers like AMD and Silicon Studios. Pretty big names, and it has others too. Like, I just wrote down the ones that I recognized. And then of course, along the side of game developer support, they also have S Style Transfer? Style Transfer ML, which stands for machine learning. It's a really interesting way of getting the developers to be able to try out new art styles before they commit to something. It, it pretty much takes a picture, and then you you it'll kind of learn the style of that picture and then adapt it for the textures of the game. It's really interesting. They did it with Starry Night. They did it with a few other famous paintings. Um, they even did it with a Pac-Man still image and it looked really cool. Not to mention, it, it it's such a strong server because it's running off its own servers. Google servers, they're strong. They have a parent, that, this is what they say. They have 10.7 uh, teraflops of GPU. I don't really like the word teraflop. It sounds very cash grabby, but at the same time, they did show the numbers. Google and or, uh, Microsoft had like six point something. Uh, PlayStation had four point something and add them together. This still beats it out. And I'm like, all right, cool, whatever. I don't really care, but it's cool to know. They also say that in, instead of just running on one single GPU to process your graphics, you can also make it so that it uses multiple GPUs, two, three, etc. whatever is necessary to make your game run at the best. Obviously, and most likely, they'll make you pay in order to do that, but I mean, for the people who really care, you can hash out a few bucks. But that also means that developers aren't so limited. If someone wants to make it on PlayStation, like a video game for PlayStation, they have to make sure it runs on the original PS4, the PS4 Slim, and the PS4 Pro. They could just focus on the PS4 Pro, but then the Slim 
and the originals might have some problems. In this case, they can go all out because Google has the power to actually run it. And all it's doing is processing the game for you and then streaming the output to your device, whatever it is, I almost said phone. For me, it'll be most likely my phone just because that is what has the internet and an unlimited amount of internet for me, at least. They even did a stream test in 2018, which they called Project Stream. And when they did that test, it did 1080p at 60 frames per second with stereo audio. But they say once it goes live later this year, which I'm estimating around fall, um, it's supposed to have 4K resolution HDR at 60 frames a second with surround sound. That's pretty cool. Like, that's pretty intense. Being able to stream that would take a good amount of internet though. My phone would probably not be able to do that. First of all, my phone's not a 4K phone. It'll barely, it barely does like 720 phone, uh, 720 on like YouTube videos every now and then, but it lags a bit. So I usually have it at like 480 or whatever. However, they say in the future, they're trying to get 8K resolution with 120 frames a second. Even more, they say. That's all for the future. Uh, they can try, they can say whatever they want. That's the future. No one has to listen to the future. What they want right now is what they're sus expecting at launch. And that is the 4K resolution with 60 frames a second. I'd be good with 720 resolution <laughs> at, at 30 frames a second, but whatever, cool. Not to mention it's running on Google servers and a co straight connection to that server. So for example, me playing a PlayStation game uh, online, my console actually processes it then it sends it to my internet service provider who sends it to the playstation network who then sends it to the actual um actual games uh network game server however with stadia you're just using your device as a screen and that connects to your internet service provider which goes straight to google's servers that's a straight deadline they say it's even going to help with privacy because it's not opening that data up to the open net not to mention since it's streaming straight to your device it also does a mirror uh, mirror stream straight to youtube so you have whatever video quality you chose straight available to you if you did 4k 60 frames a second you have a 4k 60 frames a second video prepared on YouTube to edit with. However, that's not the only thing they're doing with YouTube. Of course it's not. It's Google. They own YouTube. Of course they're going to try and integrate it even more. While you're watching YouTube, if you find like the newest trailer, they say, for a game, at the end, where the end cards are, there will actually be a play button. Now, I'm assuming if you don't own it already, it'll immediately open up the Stadia store. You can, op you can buy it from there. But if you already own it, or if you just bought it, it'll run in what they say will be five or less seconds. That's pretty cool. Like immediately you're playing the game. Like, oh dude, new trailer. Oh, the game's out. Sweet. That's awesome. Cause like <laughs> you see a trailer nowadays, you still have to go to Steam and get, get the game. I don't mind doing that. But sometimes if I want the physical release, I have to go to GameStop. And then I actually have to like, you know, hope that the GameStop didn't sell out and if they sold out then I have to find the other GameStop around here and if they're sold out then screw it I'm not going to Walmart <laughs> since it's being streamed from their servers they're processing the games you don't have to do anything with your device you're just getting the the picture the image they deal with all of the the installation and the newest updates and whatnot you have you don't have to download anything you're just being streamed the video that's it if anything, you probably have to download a Stadia app, but even then, that's probably not gonna be more than like a gig. And since they're streaming it to your devices, you already own them. If you're watching this video, you most likely have a phone, a laptop, and or a smart TV. There we go, you're done, you're set. That's it. You need, like, you, you already have what you need to, to play Stadia. And they even said cross-platform compatibility which a lot of people are assuming that it means cross-platform multiplayer uh, it might Google doesn't really seem that to care about that but at the same time I think they mean that it'll be cross-platform uh, play where you can just you know play on one thing go to the other and it'll continue your save and if you save it on that device it'll be immediately linked to your cloud 
so that you can play where you left off on another device. Makes sense, right? They said that you can use the controllers and USB devices that you already own. If you're playing on your laptop, well, no duh, you're using a, la a keyboard and mouse right there. But if you're using like a Razer gamepad, that'll work too. If you have a thing to hook up an Xbox 360 controller to your uh, laptop, you're good. If you Joe broke your iPhone and you're using a PS4 controller on there, that works. But of course, they also have their own controller, the Stadia controller. You've probably seen it around, even seen that horrible mock-up. Trust me, this one looks a lot more sleek and a lot more reliable, I'll say. Um, first of all, about their controller, I love the layout. I love where the thumbsticks are. My favorite controller layout is the PS controllers. Like, the PS4 controller is godlike to me. It's just one of the best controllers I've ever held. And this one looks to seem like it's a mix of the Xbox bulk, but the PS4 style, and I like that. I'm interested to see how it plays. And the controller itself, the Stadia controller, actually connects to Wi-Fi straight to the servers you are playing on. So you're not hooking up to your um, computer or anything. You're not hooking up to your smart TV. You're hooking up straight to your Wi-Fi, straight to the game. That way, it's not actually doing as much lag and it also has a google assistant button it has the capture it has the start select which will probably be renamed but most importantly the google assistant while you're in game you can actually press that button and it has a built-in microphone to be able to you know access the in-game features and uh support there's a lot of different things like for example they showed that if you're stuck on a level, you can press that button, ask how do I beat this level, and it'll immediately, immediately scour YouTube and find the perfect video for that section. It will scrub through and find that section for you. That way you don't have to sit around and wait until you find the right thing. Yeah, might be a little bit of a cheat, but hey, walkthroughs are available anyway. So it's available to those who want it. You don't have to use it if you don't. Speaking of features, it announced quite a bit of cool features that are gonna be able, uh, gonna be available on Stadia. For example, they said one of the biggest things they want they want to do is bring back split screen couch gaming. Thank God, I love playing with my friends on a couch and just like you know just playing like Mario Kart or Mario Party where the game gets split up in the screen or even playing like old-fashioned Nintendo 64 games however but modern day uh, graphics and whatnot is kind of hard and stressful on the consoles which are already having a hard time like, making one single instance of this game trying to split that into two and make it totally separate in, in the same world that's very stressful on the CPUs and the and especially the GPUs. In this case, Stadia said that each section of the screen will actually be its own separate server, or not server, but um, processor. There we go. It's, that's awesome. That means you have pretty much a computer to yourself for half of the screen. That's great. You're not losing any of the graphics. You're not losing any of the, uh, any of the processing. You're not losing any of the lag. You're, you're losing lag, actually. Yes, you're, you're, you're fixing the lag. <laughs> At the same time, they said for co-op uh, squad games, it's a game changer because from they said that the uh, developers will be able to bring up different screens and whatnot for your uh, friends. Imagine playing uh, games like Fortnite or Apex and you can just suddenly bring up your friend's uh, like POV on a small little screen in the game. That's crazy you can then stop doing call outs and saying hey where are you it's like oh i'm over here if you look this way and that way or saying oh 360 south like for the uh, for the heading and whatnot they'll immediately know 360 south what no that's that's not a heading instead of like saying the heading and having to calculate okay they're looking that way so it would be this number for me instead of doing that or pinging it they can just bring up their their view and see where they're looking that's so awesome, so great. And of course, the big one they announced was also state share. State share means that while you're playing a game, you could probably press like the share button, it'll bring up an options like, do you want to take a screenshot or something like that? This is what I'm imagining. 
you you'll, you can take a screenshot, you can record this part, or you can create a state share option, which pretty much makes a link which saves your health, the world state, or even your inventory, or even all of it, and creates that link so you can share it with people on YouTube, Twitter, through text and whatnot. All they have to do is click it. If they, I'm imagining if they own the game, they can immediately play. However, that's where it gets questionable. Do they have to own the game to play it? Can they play like a small limited demo? How much of it can they play? Can they play through the rest of the game? It's it's really interesting. But then again, think of all the fun you can do with that. You, you pretty much they pretty much made their own version of Mario Maker. Content creators can actually go out of their way to make difficult trials in certain games, limiting the amount of resources you have, limiting the health you have, limiting the time you have starting off in a very difficult place and making it a challenge to beat those different states and just it, it, it makes it so um so much cooler and then of course along those lines if you're a content creator and you want to play more with your friends or your viewers or whatever there's also crowd play while you're the example they gave was nba 2k i don't know it just says nba 2k um, I guess I didn't write the, down the uh, specific year, but imagine you're playing an NBA game and you're watching it on YouTube. It's your favorite streamer and they actually open up the lobby. You can actually click the join lobby button and you'll be put into a queue to actually play like that. That's just crazy. It gives the, uh, the streamers and the fans a bigger connect games have already been trying to do that make it easier to join your favorite games with your favorite streamers but nothing on this kind of scale most of the time it's still very difficult to get to work sometimes the game doesn't have it at all so this is a really changing the industry like it, it makes it so much more available to those who are watching and want to actually join in on the fun another thing they announced is that pretty much the entire internet is now the developer's store, is now their advertising. You can send a link to the, a game through uh, text, through tweet, you can post it on Discord, you can put it on Facebook, anywhere, and it immediately creates a link to the Stadia store to buy it. And then from there, you can immediately play it because Stadia is on there. I'm not 100% sure how it works. I'm not 100% sure on how any of this works, but I do have my theories and I'd like to hear yours. But first of all, let's talk about who this is for because some people really love it, some people really hate it, and some people are right in the middle. For me, I'm in the middle. I've always been in the middle. As Even as I was watching the announcement, I really swayed between the sides to the point where I was just basically in the gray area of liking and disliking. First of all, I love the idea, the concept. Who could, who doesn't love the concept of 4K streaming at 60 frames a second gaming? That's awesome. But the problem I have is that this is very internet heavy. Not a lot of people have great internet. Some people have just good internet. And I don't know what good internet would look like with this Stadia service. For example, for me, I've lived in this house for 13 years and we can't get internet. No one provides around here. We tried Time Warner Cable. Nope. Uh, AT&T U-verse. Nope. Spectrum Internet. Nope. We tried a bunch of them. We even looked up a bunch of the crappy uh, ones to see what would happen. Nope. They don't provide around here. The only ones that really do are the satellite ones and those are expensive as crap. You know, $20, $30 a month. 20 30 gigs a month for 80 dollars that's insane no god no that's horrible so for me i definitely have to be streaming on my phone however since i have t-mobile i have 20 gigs of hotspot available to me however since i have t-mobile i have 20 gigs of hotspot available to me that's what i usually use for my gaming whenever i play with my friends however a lot of that is used by the updates and this is where I start to get swayed to the I love it side. I spend probably about 12 gigs of my hotspot updating my games and my services. Yes, I'm still gonna have to update Discord to talk to my friends, I'm still gonna have to update Chrome every now and then, I'm still gonna have to update my computer every now and then, but for example, me and my friends wanted to play Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege. 
I was really hyped, they were really hyped, and we didn't really have a lot of time. I looked up the game because I hadn't played it in a while. It had a 32 gig update. I only have 20 gigs of hotspots, and two gigs already takes about an hour to download. So I had to go to my friend's house later on in the week to download it. Me and my friends didn't get to play that night. So for them saying, hey, don't worry about the downloads. You don't have to do anything like that. We handle the updates. We handle the game. You just sit back and play. That's really big for me. I love that so much. It makes them. It makes me feel like it was made for me. However, at the same time, the, the, the fact that it has to be connected to the internet at all times also means it's not for me. <laughs> Because that means if I want to play any game and I'm out of hotspot, I have to play it on my phone. That's perfectly fine still because I still have my PlayStation, my Nintendo, and my computer. I can still download games on Steam and play them offline. But if I ever want to play online games, I have to play through Stadia or regular hotspot and whatnot. So who is this for? Well, it's not for the hardcore gamers. The fact that it's still, like, still streaming through the internet, a lot of people have said that they've tried it out and they actually have a lot of latency and the lag. Not the hardcore gamers, definitely not. So if you're into eSports or you're trying to get into eSports, this is probably not the service for you. You probably still want to use regular services like Steam and whatnot, and maybe even Xbox or PlayStation, whatever. So who is this for? That's a really good question. It's not for everyone, but it's definitely for some people. My friend, for example, he has good internet, but he can't afford a good computer, a great computer. He can only afford like netbooks. He's thinking about getting a Chromebook and I told him about this and he's definitely down to get a Chromebook now. And that's, that's who it would be for. The people who kind of can't afford a good gaming rig to run these games. For me, I have a laptop that can that's pretty beefy. It has a 1060 Ti with 16 gigs and an i7 uh, processor. It's not the best by far, but it is good enough to run a lot of the modern games. My other friends have really good computers. Some of them don't, but they have great internet. And they're really interested to try this because they want to try those new games. They don't have PlayStations. They don't have the Switch. They don't have beefy computers. They're interested to play the new game, so they have to borrow consoles from my friends and me, but this makes it so that it's more available to them and all they have to do is just buy the game. It's most likely gonna be a paid service as well, kind of like the Xbox Live or the PlayStation Network or the Nintendo Online. So most likely you'll still be paying like, you know, $50, $60 a year, but considering that you're cutting out $300, $400, up to $500 for a brand new console, I'm okay with that. <laughs> so I'm gonna be trying it out as soon as it's available and I will probably even stream it when I first get it and I'll probably even record it and make a video about it. But I wanna know what you guys think. What do you guys think of Stadia? Are you gonna try it? Do you think it's stupid? Do you think it's lame? Do you think it's the next evolution in gaming? But please try and stay calm and rational in the comments. I don't really want a war. Whether you like it, whether you hate it, or whether you just don't care, I will see you guys in the next one. Jay Hikari, signing out.